Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the University of Bijaya. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Maush Salima for uh, organizing this event and also to salute my colleagues and friends who are there uh, in this morning to speak a little bit about civic education. So uh, my presentation is entitled Using Aesthetic Aesop's Fable in Teaching Ethics for First-Year Students, Vijaya University. Directly start with the introduction. So, teaching ethics using aesthetics in English for Algerian students need different uh, ways to attract their full attention. So, the new generation... Is it okay here? So, the new generation, in fact, uh, often prefer, for example, to recourse to schmoops and spark notes. I, uh, I address teachers of literature, you can notice this. So schmoops and spark notes to be acquainted with the content instead of reading the whole text. So we opted to include the, uh, the, in the process of learning using, using the fables of Aesop, okay? So I propose to use Aesop fables in my lecture because they are clues to our cultural environment, which is very important. So, moreover, they are an incredible means of persuasion since they include ethos, pathos, and logos that are, in fact, the most important elements according to Aristotle in the process of persuading people. So I tried to uh, summarize in a way the, uh, the views of uh, both Aristotle and Plato concerning a good communication in which we have in fact to introduce something very important for the students. So here rhetoric is related to didactics because it is through the speech of the instructor that the student can have access to the content of the lecture. However, the polemic over the role of rhetoric in society still exists, and for some people, the word argument and appeal to base emotion rhetorics is dangerous because it is used. Is a problem, I think. Ah, so and appeal to. So I said, I said, however, the polemic over the role of rhetoric in society still exists, and for some people, the word rhetoric means empty words, misleading arguments, and appeal to base emotions. So rhetoric then is dangerous because it is used in political extremism, racism, and unscrupulous sales techniques. So therefore, Studying rhetoric in forms of its potential for misuse and to recognize when a speaker is seeking to manipulate us. It's very important. Plato then, using Socrates' voice, calls teachers of rhetoric sophists and often reiterates his attack towards their ways of using language to manipulate their audience. He criticized the sophists for using rhetoric as a means of deceit instead of discovering truth. So in Gorgias, for example, one of Plato's uh, dialogues, so here Plato defines, so he defines rhetoric as the persuasion of ignorant masses within the courts and the assemblies. In his treatise on rhetoric, then, Aristotle Plato's student details three main ways in which a speaker can try to persuade an audience. First, by appealing to credibility and authority, which is ethos. Then, by engaging the emotion of the spectators, pathos. And then, by developing the logic and fact, logos. Okay, so Aristotle also admits that those who master rhetoric can use their skill to spark inflammatory emotions, divert attentions away from the rationality of a given audience. By drawing attention 
to the problematic of manipulability of perception of truth, Aristotle invites us to consider the epistemological affinity between belief and experience, as well as the ethical implication of all forms of communication. So here we have a section that I entitled didactics, aesthetics, and ethics. So they are in fact related. He was, so Aristotle was perhaps the first person to recognize that rhetoric as an art of communication was neut morally neutral, that it could be used for either good or ill. And here appears in fact the role of the teacher to choose. So modern didactics aims as this intervention attempts to show, to use aesthetic to teach ethics that are universally acknowledged as being the good. At least we are, in fact, we agree about some notions of good. Okay. So what is at stake is the formation of good citizens of the world with civic knowledge of their rights as well as their duties. So here, why Aesop then? Aesop's fables, rhetoric, and the Algerian context. So we have chosen Aesop fables because here they are really close to our own culture. He is, in fact, used by Aristotle on rhetoric as a paradigm of public speech. Aristotle claims that his fables are suitable in deliberative oratory. His fables come from the oral tradition that circulates in the Mediterranean, the four North African folklore shares in the teaching of these fables, though in somehow altered ways. So here we have, in fact, tried to make the, um, a link between the two. So many Algerian proverbs from our oral tradition have their corresponding utterances in Aethop's fable. For example, our Kabil saying, say at bib, or the Arabic saying that says Kul and Murzel is to be found in the fable entitled Jupiter and the Monkey. So here uh, it's really a funny fable that speaks about a kind of um, meeting between people. So Jupiter, he is the, the authority, told them that you have to bring your offsprings. So, the, the, the handsomest or the most beautiful is going to be allotted a prize. So the monkey, the mother monkey, in fact, had brought her baby, and which is in fact judged by them as flat-nosed, hairless, and ill-featured young monkey. So all the audience started to laugh, but she said, so the mother said, I know not whether Jupiter will allot the prize to my son, but the thing I do know is that he is at least, in the eyes of me, his mother, the dearest, handsomest, and most beautiful of all. So I wonder if you, you see the, uh, the link. So pathos, ethos, and logos in the fable. So Aesop's fable are not only written for the pleasure of the reader, but they embody a didactic purpose at the end. So didactic, but at the same time, there is this funny guy. It, it means that c'est pas comme un bourreau, so you have to do this or to do that, but we have what we call a situation. Then we have a lesson at the end. So this is the part of Logos, and in this respect, George Townsend writes that the fable ever keep in view as its high prerogative and superable attribute the great purpose of instruction and will necessarily seek to include some moral maxim, social duty, and political truth. Ethos is related to the authority and the credibility of the fabulist. So here, let's say the teacher, the latter should discharge a most important function. So according to George Townsend, again, he is a great teacher, a corrector of morals, a censor of vice, a commander of virtue. He is to create a laugh, laughter, but under a merry gaze to convey instruction. So here the third element of persuasion according to Aristotle and which is to be found in the fable is called pathos. It is used to raise the emotion of the reader or the audience. This element is depicted in Aesop's fables each time the character suffers injustice due to the vice of another one. It is crucial because it invites the reader to feel empathy as far as the injured so to avoid committing the same for other persons. 
So here we have included the experiment and we try to describe it. So this handball experiment is that a kind of... So we have uh, given some uh, handouts for the students. So it is a part of the lecture as well and they have to answer some questions anonymously, meaning that there will not be no mark for them. So they are free to say whatever they want without putting their names on the handout. So the students' anonymous answers were collected after an introduction to literary text class. They constitute a hundred copies of... The first, in fact, questions of comprehension and analysis, and the second one, so it pushes them to write something, okay, which is a, uh, it is a productive practice in which they have to rewrite the fable using modern context this time, this is the assignment, and using human instead of animals. So here you have to, uh, to notice pass, it can take from one to two minutes, it is too short, okay? So the questions, so they are in fact short and clear, what have you understood and, and learned from the text? What is the time required to read it? What is the kind of text to which it belongs? Provide the title for it. Is the story applicable for life in general? Answered by I have analyzed and reviewed, I have not yet finished. Reviewed four students couldn't finish their paragraph, though questions of comprehension and analysis so were dealt with in an acceptable way, notwithstanding some, uh, in fact, grammatical and spelling mistakes. Sample answers, so among the answers, except one, do good deeds and one day someone will return it to you, except two. I understand that helping others is always beneficial and those who help always get something nice in return, except, except three. Do help others, you will have it back when you will really need it, except six, just be good. Then the discussion. So, though the students are in their first year of graduation, they responded with a certain felicity security, and even hope. So, as readers of this fable, they reacted by feeling, thinking, and responding to the credibility of the story without feeling the oppressive authority of direct moralizing, which is often taken by them. I mean, majority of the teenagers so think that we are, um, when we moralize them, so when we push them to do things, they think that it is a humiliating attack, okay? So the class discussion was nurtured by the students' enthusiastic intervention. For them, the text is short but comprehensible. So they read it in less than three minutes and the fictitious elements are balanced. So here we have, for example, just one event, two characters, a linear plot, and all this in six lines and a half. It changes them from the zombies game and the GTS somber atmosphere of their video games. So the student contend that human actions have the boomerang effect. Okay? So to be or to become tolerant, compassionate, and to act in a good way are in fact the first seeds of civic education. So the written expressions are copies in a way of the event of the, of the fable that turns around tolerance and help. However, what is encouraging is their imagination that metamorpho metamorphose sorry, the fable into a real story related to their personal life. So the majority of them narrated a real event that happened to them or to someone they know, reviving Aesop's instruction of being good for others. Now the conclusion. Using fables to... Aesthetic reading and writing in English and create the students' desire to read more of Aethops and his fables and implanted in them the first idea that 
prefigures a writing experience through transforming the fables into stories of modern times by transposing the animal speech into humans. Furthermore, they included their personal touch by relating events from their own lives. Therefore, Aesop's fables sorry, are perfect templates for wisdom and civic education since they entertain and instruct at the same time. Reading Aesop's fables introduced the students to notions of self-help, we find it, in the fable called Hercules and the Wagoner, hard work, the ants and the grasshopper, something you know, all of you, and then hard work, so, so self-respect and peaceful coexistence, the boys and the frogs, saying the truth, the boy who cries, the wolf, that are foundation stones in the edifice of civic education. Thank you. So, 